Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It cut the first bit off. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, wherever you may be in the world. I hope you're all well and happy. I'm just making sure everything's working. I'm using a slightly different system this evening, and that is scary. Good, everything seems to be working. Welcome to 2021. Let's hope things improve this year. Let's hope we have a lovely, lovely year as opposed to the one we've just had. I trust you're all well and happy and have had a great Christmas break, etc. <clears throat> now, what do we got going on here? Make sure I've got all of my notes and everything. Yeah, so. I think everybody's here. I guess uh, hopefully a few more will show up. We're a bit low on numbers tonight, but there we go. I'm sure some others will arrive. So who used this unusual break to work out with your photography skills? Because we didn't have quite so many entries this time. I'm curious who was getting stuck in, who used a bit of this time to get the camera out again? Because, you know, many of us are going back into lockdown, certainly the UK. It's very, very strict here now. And uh, it's a good time to practice some skills and stop yourself going completely bonkers. I'm hoping we don't end up going back where it was for too long. Um, thank you, Luca. <laughs> it's Christmas present. My brother gave me this shirt for Christmas. This is its debut. <coughs> Excuse me. Good on you, those of you who did. And shame on those of you who are being very quiet indeed. But there we go. It can be tough to kind of get motivated when you're feeling uninspired. The trick is to push through that barrier. And then once you get through it, you can re-engage yourself. For example, if you want to know what that feels like, try setting the alarm clock for 30 minutes before you need to get up for absolutely no reason at all. And then just do it. Just get up and go and do something. No laying there snoozing and all the rest of it. Because when you do do that, once you have got up, once you push through that bit of pain barrier, Actually, you feel really good. One, because you pushed through the pain barrier, and two, because you kind of got on and did some stuff. So, uh, I want to give a shout out to Danny Drummond, Douglas Deacon, and Alejandro Pellegrini, and Ivan Middlecoot. Thank you. You gave some very generous donations, and we all owe you a debt of gratitude because you are obviously helping keep the ball rolling. <coughs> Thank you very much indeed. Also, I just want to let you know that our first PLD judge, those of you who've been around this for a while, we had a few interview sessions and things in the early days. And uh, uh, if you'd like me to introduce some of that again, please just put a little why just for yes in, in the comments. I'm pointing at my other screen. That's a bit silly, isn't it? Because you don't know why I'm pointing over there. Pop a why in the screen. Um, if you'd like me to get a few guest people back, maybe to do a few little talks for us as a group. But Estra Suarez, who was our very first judge, I know some of you attended a talk he did fairly recently. Uh, he's doing a street photography Zoom on January the 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern Time. And if any of you would like to join in on that, then there is a link in the description below this live feed in the, in the description there. Click on that link, it will take you over and it will tell you all about it. If you'd like to hang around just for 10 minutes after we've done our judging, I've got some of his pictures which I'd like to show you. He is one of my absolute favourite photographers. He has a lightness of touch in the most powerful situations. He is a war correspondent, photojournalist. He's uh, shot for National Geographic. Um, <clears throat> he is also a yoga teacher and a martial arts instructor. He's a very interesting guy. Very zen indeed as well, when you consider the things that he has done in his life. So, eat, drink and be merry. We did have some great photography, as always. I really enjoy the images captured or attempted to capture. That feeling of being merry. Not easy to capture the feeling of being merry. How do you capture a feeling in a photo? It's not easy. It's one of the reasons I think it's a great idea if you can listen to Estra speak, because he is a master of that and there is another exposure photographer who I met last year out in the Arab Emirates called Chris Suspect, who is an amazing person at capturing that sort of thing. And I thought it might be interesting to get him to come and do a bit of a talk for us. Um, 
but we will go there later. Let's go have a look at your pictures because let's face it, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Let me just get my screen sorted out. I was too busy gas bagging, waiting and just making sure. Oh, look, look at the numbers. Lots more people are arriving. <clears throat> Hello and welcome everybody who is just arriving now. So let me get my first shot set up for you. And we're going to begin with someone who is obviously trying to curry favour with me. <clears throat> so Donhead. What a wonderful way to begin 2021. I couldn't agree more, my friend. And in fact, you reminded me of when I had my XR600 going out on a very similar, very cold morning with my friend Pete Batson. There's my old scruffy XR600 covered in mud. We had a wonderful day, despite the fact it was so cold. But uh, what better way? to do that. Glyn Haskins, what's the matter with you? Motorbikes are boring for goodness sake. <laughs> you need to get one, mate. You'll change your mind. Fantastic things. Anyway, into the photography. <clears throat> Let's start off by having a look at Basil Jid's uh, Mabuza's picture. Because it's such a happy, merry picture, why wouldn't we want to start there? What a great shot. Well, I always bang on about things like decisive moments, whether Cartier-Bresson coined the phrase or not, I don't know. But this is just a great little moment. Look at this happy, happy little face. There is so much joy bouncing out of this little baby boy. Absolutely fantastic picture. Uh, my feedback, if you like, would be things to watch for. We've got that very, very bright highlight in the corner, which is kind of distracting and, and it would be really easy to lose just by moving this way a little bit. That's all it is, just a little bit of that. And then you would have missed that basil, but it's such a lovely picture. The other thing is careful with that exposure. And I think maybe that bright bit in the corner is possibly causing your camera to underexpose a bit because I took the liberty of doing a little bit of brightening and uh, hang on, let me change that cut so it's more, um, so it's stronger. Here we go, let's see. You should be able to see the difference. What I've done is lift the exposure just a little bit. And I know that makes that highlight brighter, but if we could have lost that and increased the exposure a bit, I just think it makes it happier. Bright pictures tend to be happy. Um, I'm just looking to see if you're here by any chance, Basil. I can't see you, but uh, it is. It's, you can't look at this and not get the feeling of happy and merry. Excuse me. And another which I feel with a similar thing going on, because this is such a great picture, Darren Sangster. <clears throat> what a great little moment, you know? Doesn't your daughter look happy there? It's a real Christmassy thing going on there. But again, I would suggest that if you were to get that exposure just a little bit brighter, it somehow makes it happier. Bright is happy. Dark and moody is dark and moody. But it is such a great shot. It's nice and sharp. Everything kind of works. I, I quite like the colours. The slightly cold blue in the background is really nice. And she's got nice natural fresh tones and those parcels and packages. I don't know what she's opening. But she's obviously very, very excited to have it. So I think that's a wonderful picture. Just watch that exposure. Exposure is a compositional tool, I would argue. Because, you know, composition is all about making the picture, not just aligning up the elements within the frame, where you position things, whether you use rules of composition or not. Exposure is also part of it, as we have already seen. Debbie Harmet, I think this is a good fun little picture. But I need to give you a little bit of coaching. This is a white balance thing. Um, it's just a little bit too yellow. Now, I find this interesting because I took your picture and took the liberty of having a fiddle with it in Photoshop. And just to see what would happen, I did auto color correct. And look, it made no difference. You can see on the left there in my history panel, auto color. 
and it didn't make any difference. I just find that really quite intriguing because I really thought with all that colour in it, the auto colour would have pulled it out. It's one of the reasons it's, it's worth being careful with these things and thinking about it. Maybe setting a white balance preset when you're under tungsten light because I pulled some of that yellow out and I just think it's just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Let's just flick between them. So here's your original and here's one with just a little bit of that ready colour, just sort of pulled down a bit. <coughs> Jenny, I get what you're saying, auto tone might be the thing. Mm, maybe, um, but tone, colour, you're much better to do things yourself. So if you set something like a, um, a tungsten preset on the camera when photographing these situations, it will clean it up for you pretty much straight away. Straight away. Auto white balance is a tricky beast. It's possible the auto white balance saw all that green in the tree behind and went, oh, look at all that green. And then it thumped a bunch of those ready magenta tones into the picture to try and counteract the Christmas tree. I don't know. Auto is very handy at times, but it can get things wrong. Um, and I think we've got a similar thing going on here. We're doing the white, baron, white balance bit here, Karen Toy Downs. Again, it's a very simple, Christmassy festive little picture and I like the tree and I like the cup and all the rest of it but again we've got a lot lot of yellow now a bit of warm tones nice but I think it it helps just to tone it back down just a little bit just to sort of get it a bit closer to how our eyes would see it would a grey card help who asked that Barry <clears throat> grey cards are really useful there are two ways you can use them for those of you who don't know, um, you can either, on some cameras, you can put, say, the grey card where the cup and the biscuit are. You can fill the frame, leave, leave the grey card there, bring your camera to or zoom in onto the grey card. And some cameras will allow you to white balance for the card, which means that it is absolutely spot on for that little pool of light. The other way you can use them is just to put a grey card by the cup, take a picture of it, and then if you're doing raw files, it doesn't matter what white balance you're on because then in Lightroom or whatever software you use, you can just get a little eyedropper and just go, this is white, and click on your white card. It will color correct that, and then you just copy and paste those color settings onto your picture. And if you took 10 pictures in this place, they'll all be the same white balance. It'll all be consistent. <clears throat> Jonathan's just saying Christmas tree lights can have a strange white balance. Yeah, I would agree because there's so many different colors happening all at once, strange sort of color, car color curves. Um, but yeah, interesting by the way, yes, I shoot mostly raw, seeing a few comments going through about raws and things. I do shoot mostly raw because I want to do my own post-production rather than letting the camera do it for me because it will. Um, next time I will try and remember to show you what a raw file looks like. If, if you've got a raw file, you can do this yourself actually, get your raw file and then right click on it and you get the option open with. If you're on a Mac, if you open with, let me have a look, what's it called? I just want to have a look on mine because I can't remember. <clears throat> if you open with text edit, you will see the data of the raw file. If you're on a PC, I think you can do it with, is it called Notepad, the equivalent one? You can open a JPEG with them, but it's not an image file. You see all the data. It is bizarre. This huge, endless, never-ending stream of symbols and letters and code which actually make up your picture, which I think is just kind of interesting. But anyway, let's move on. I kind of like this one, Philip. Doing a bit of zoom blur on the tree. Doesn't that work nicely? Why aren't you in my shortlist shout-outs? I don't know. I apologise. I think you should be because I just think it works. It's not the easiest thing to get right. I'm guessing you shot this on a tripod because those little light streaks, they're absolutely straight. Now, if this was shot handheld, human beings, we move, don't we? There'd be little movements and then those streaks would be kind of wibbly wobbly. It would be like little tadpole things sort of swimming through the air. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying it would be. And I think this looks really dynamic by having that camera rock steady. So, yeah, I think you did a really nice job of a zoom blur there. I think it's quite good fun. I'd maybe have quite liked to have seen a little bit more of what was going on through the door into the other room. I think that would have been quite interesting. Maybe not cropped it off quite so much. I don't know whether you started in and zoomed out. 
or started out and zoomed in. I can never quite remember which way it goes, but it's a nice picture, Philip. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we've got another really great bit of fun going on here too. Paul Stick. Look at that dog's expression. I do think it's good fun. I do think it's good fun. But somehow it just looks to me like it's a little bit grey and I don't know why. I think you could also have got away with having more tree in the shot. If you tilted the camera up and had a bit more tree above because the dog in the basket with the rabbit, it kind of works in its own right and we'd have known where to look. I think a bit more Christmas tree would have probably helped. Um, but I do think it's it's a great shot and I love the moment. I love the dog's expression. I don't know whether it's fed up at being put in a basket or whether it's kind of bemused by the Christmas tree above it. Um, yeah, I would, a couple of people have just said a little bit dark. Yeah, I would agree it possibly is a little bit dark. It could have been a little bit brighter. Don't be afraid to argue with your camera when it comes to exposures because the camera doesn't know what is right the camera only knows that its programmers have said everything is gray you must make it equate to gray so you can always argue with it don't feel bad about arguing with your camera i felt this was a very intriguing shot from harry crossland i think it's a really cool idea um and I also think your model was indeed very, very patient because you're saying you buried her in Christmas balls. Uh, this isn't a photoshopped image, which I think is great fun. The only thing for me which is missing a tiny bit is the fun. Um, I love the idea. I just think, wouldn't it have been fun if you could have somehow made a laugh? Maybe you did. Maybe you're here. You can, you can tell us. Um, but it's like, I think it would have been great if she was laughing. Maybe, you know, if she moved, all the baubles were falling off. But maybe that could have been fun too. That's a very merry thing, isn't it? If she was laughing and all those baubles are kind of moving away, I think that would be cool. The only other thing I would say, Harry, my coaching would be just keep an eye on that white balance again because it's just a bit orange. Um, but nonetheless, I think it's a great idea. Um, and and it's it's kind of well done. It just needs that little bit extra. And I know, I know, you're kind of like, no, don't move, don't knock the baubles off, I need to get ready. And then something's changed and you've got to fiddle with the camera and you're conscious of holding her up. But you know, hey, she volunteered to do it. So she's obviously a masochist, <laughs> but a good one. The only other thing I would suggest is maybe if she was a bit more central, because we've got all these circles and things, having that human face absolutely square, smack in the middle would have helped. I quite like the slight angle. I think that's quite good fun. Maybe if she was right in the middle, it, it possibly would have helped a bit but great idea really great idea another great idea here from uh, Cheyenne Morgan um, putting fireworks in a jar I think that is quite good fun having a sparkler in there very difficult thing to pull off this because the sparkler is so bright and you know your your other chosen items being camera lenses are very dark now it looks to me you you pretty much obviously lit this too you brought some light in to side light the lenses and it does that dark and moody thing the difficulty of course is the sparkler is so bright but it's a very very clever idea and what i really salute you for is for giving it a go because that is a complicated thing to try and do and try and get it right um Simon said he'd burn his house down trying it. You're like me, not to be trusted with a box of matches. Um, but I do think it's a really great idea. And if you could play with this idea a little more I think, and perfect it, I, I reckon you could be onto something quite good fun. I'm not sure camera lenses are necessarily the right thing to go with a jar of fireworks. I'm not sure. What do you think, guys? What would go with a jar of fireworks? Let's see if we can help Shana out here. What do you think would go with a jar of fireworks? Maybe you think camera lenses are just the right thing. But it'd be interesting to see what you think. And it says bottles. Bottle of champagne. That's quite a good idea. Fire extinguisher. <laughs> Thanks, Irene. A <laughs> uh, bit more reflection with a jar. That's cool. A bucket of water. <laughs> yeah, definitely, Paul. Mince pies. Yeah, maybe. Um, a bigger jar of fireworks. <laughs> 
a nice one, Alec. Um, <coughs> cherries in a jar. I don't know. Five liters of petrol. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely getting carried away, and I'm not going to talk about the other thing. I think it's time to move on from that particular joke. But there we go, as long as you're enjoying it. Um, hey, nice one. I had no champagne, sorry. No other merry subjects. Hey, no worries. But I think this is such a great idea. Such a great idea. And I'd love to see you have a play with it and see if you can take that a little bit further. Uh, What's this? Mike, does that Pennywise red balloon still haunt you? I'm sorry, I'm not sure what... I think you're on about the red balloon in the negative space video. No, I like my red balloon. But anyway, let's move on a little bit. Um, we've got a nice idea going on here, David Hartwick. A bit of Christmassy sort of stuff. By the way, this challenge wasn't just about Christmas. I know it was eat, drink and be merry, but it doesn't necessarily mean Christmas. It could be something else. Eating and drinking and being merry doesn't necessarily just happen at Christmas. Because at the end of the day, you've got to remember, Christmas is a religious festival. It's a, it's a, it's a celebration of, of... It's a religious festival, isn't it? Um, eating and drinking and merry doesn't necessarily always have to be part of that. And it's quite interesting. I should have said that before. So I ought to shut my mouth because I'm dropping myself in it. I love the fact you shot this at Blue Hour. Could have been a little bit earlier. I think the blue could have been stronger. My coaching would be maybe a bit more contrast. And also, you see where the antlers just kind of touching the top. If you could have come back a bit. And I know exactly where you were standing. I totally get this place. I know it. And there isn't a great deal of room behind uh, you, I don't think, if I remember correctly. Possibly a bit to the right, so that Tower Bridge was nicely framed in the middle between the, you know, the building on the right and... Um, the reindeer's ass, I think, so it was equidistant. I think it's good fun you put the little nativity star in there. I think that's that's just kind of fun. Just be really careful. Little bits of composition, I think, <coughs> can really, really help. Um, yeah, interesting. I thought this was good fun too, and I, and I, I liked this because it's a different take on the whole merry thing from Julianne Wilson. It's a kookaburra. Now, if you've never heard of kookaburra, you probably won't know why they are so merry. It's just like, I don't know, it sounds like an old-fashioned hurdy-gurdy. Or when I first heard one, I thought it sounded a bit like a fax machine. You know, the old fax machines that made that funny noise down the telephone line? I think they make an amazing sound. And it is a happy, happy sort of a sound that comes out of a kookaburra. So I like your idea. Photographically, Julie, I would say it's just the light's a bit harsh. You've got kind of quite hard light just smashing into the cookie. Whereas if you could have somehow, I get it, I get it, it's probably opportunistic. There's a kookaburra, you got the shot. But maybe if you could have found a way to, to reshoot, you know, wait around where if you know where the kookaburras hang out and see if you can get some. Because if the light was washing straight across from in front of his or her beak, I think it would be really great. But uh, I do love a kookaburra. They are definitely merry and happy and fun. Camilla, Camilla or Camellia? I'm gonna have to wait till it pops up on this screen because it's not big enough. Camilla, Setskli. I like your idea because and actually you've got, I think you've got a really nice composition here when it comes to doing Christmas decorations. <clears throat> it is just slightly dark. The warm tones kind of work, but again, I think they could have been just a little bit, little bit lifted, not quite so yellow. But of course, our problem here is the fact that it's not quite sharp. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can see that you've been careful. You've focused on that red bauble in the foreground. Uh, but the camera has moved during the exposure and so it's all blurred a bit, which is a shame because you've actually got a very pleasing little bit of composition going on here and I like the sparkles and all that sort of thing. Careful with that camera movement. It's one of those annoying things. How can you combat that? Either using a tripod or sitting the camera on a stack of books or something so it can't move when you open the shutter. 
or uh, just by increasing your ISO, get that ISO up and up and up. Um, and yeah, you'll introduce a little bit of noise maybe, but I'd rather have a little bit of noise in a picture than a picture that, that's kind of blurry because that spoils it rather too much. But uh, it is a nice shot. I like your composition and I like your idea. Now, again, talking about light here, Paul Martin, I'm not quite sure how the beheaded prawn comes in as merry. <laughs> what does it say? I want to read what you said. Really is highlights here. Totally disappointed. Okay, I get it. Disjointed, I get where you're going. <clears throat> your light is just too harsh, sir. Maybe that's part of your idea. Because it's been a pretty harsh 12 months, hasn't it? Um, but it's just the light is very, very harsh. The plate is very, very burnt out. So what causes that? That is because the light source is too close. It looks to me like you've got a desk lamp or a torch or something going on to light it. I'm just looking in case you're here. You've got a torch or a desk lamp or something going on to light the shot. Now when you have, where's my phone? Is it nearby? No, it isn't. That's annoying because I wanted to go and get my phone and show you. Um, when the light source is very close to the subject it makes it really really harsh and contrasty and burns out the highlights but the same light source if you just move it away a little bit it then starts to soften out a bit you can still get shadows you can still have hard light but um you know delary said go get it we'll wait do you want to, do you want me to go and get it it's over there on the table i can do that um and i can probably demonstrate it on my hand if you like <clears throat> okay, go on, we've got a few yeses, I've just got to unmic myself. in the room Let's put this back on okay <laughs> talk about me while I'm not here thanks Gary I don't doubt that for a minute I'm sure you can find more interesting things to talk about oh no come on the flashlight on my phone isn't working look I'm not making it up look if I press the little thing look, it's not working I don't know why Oh well, technical problems. Where was that cable going? This cable, it's plugging into my laptop. This is, this is, the, mic this is the microphone, you see. You go like that, you get a different sound. Um, sorry about that. The flashlight on my torch isn't working. But no, Delarice, I'm not going to go and restart it. Not now. Take too long. Um, well, I could do, I suppose, and then come back to it. Let's see what happens. Let's press that, turn it off. Slide to power off, right, I'll come back to that. <clears throat> but as you move it further and closer, it changes the light and it's so easy to see. So yeah, okay, I will. What else have we got? I think we've got a great little thing here going on too from Dave Hansen. I think you've got loads of potential here, Dave, because you've got some lovely evening light. And you know, what can be more merry and more fun than a kid skating on a pond? Reminds me when I was a kid, there was a pond up the road. <clears throat> and uh, my friend Simon, who lived across the road from the pond and I, one winter, I remember us getting our, we were only 14, but of course we had little motorbikes and things. We were out across the road with our parents yelling at us because we were riding them on the ice, sort of doing ice speedway, ran around the pond, getting in trouble. I think you've got the possibility for a really interesting shot here and I get what you're doing you've kind of caught that moment where um, this this little fella is kind of doing his ice skate practice but I think what's needed here and I'm being harsh Dave because it is a nice shot and it's a great idea and you've got lovely light I love that little pool of light on his face by the way I think you could make it more dramatic maybe if you could shoot from a slightly lower angle slightly wider lens and then get him to skate towards you and just sort of ignore you but skate in your direction because if you were lower down I think you would make it really quite a powerful sort of a shot. How do I make a phone switch on? 
I don't know. I'm not very good with tech, am I? Here it comes. <clears throat> but, nice idea. Try doing it again if you get the opportunity, maybe from a lower angle. angle wider lens, because when you use a wide angle lens in close, it, it adds a real sense of drama into an image. It kind of, it makes it more powerful. You kind of get the feeling of really being there. It would give the viewer the feeling that, whoa, they're gonna bump into me, that sort of thing. Less bystander -y. but nonetheless, I think it's a nice idea, and congratulations on spotting that lovely little piece of light. I thought this was a really moving one, <clears throat> Chris, I found this really moving, and yeah, I know, you all know, I, I kind of like these sorts of things. I'm a bit of a hermit, but bizarrely, I'm quite interested in, in this sort of photography, this sort of people watching photography. And I think you've got such a lovely picture. I think this is a lovely picture. Beautiful, black and white, just works. You don't have to worry about white balances and things. I love the look on her face. Um, and I get how challenging and yet rewarding it was for you. Um, really sad. Now, I don't know whether or not there were moments when your grandmother kind of did smile, look up, engage with you. I think that would have really made it work beautifully. Um, but I really, really like this shot. It's a shame about the hand in the background, but you know, hey, you've got lovely light on your grandmother and I think this picture is really worthy of a bit of a shout out because it is a lovely shot. We've got another lovely shot coming up now as well, which I think is such good fun. What could be more merry than a child splashing in a puddle? I'm still splashing them now and I'm 50 something, late 50 something. How did I get to be that old? I just don't know. <clears throat> By any coaching here, Carol, because, you know, you have got a great angle on this shot. You have crouched down to go more child level, and it really helps. You've got a nice, slightly soft background, which is helping to emphasize, tell your viewers where to look. I just think I'd like to have seen her the other way around. Now, had she actually been jumping and splashing and waving her arms around, I think the back view kind of works really well. But I just think... If she was coming the other way, because she looks like she's paddling cautiously, maybe lost in thought. I don't know if she came out towards you or not. Um, I don't know if this is a child that you know, Carol, or, or, or whether it's you know one of those shots you took in, in the park. It is nonetheless a very dreamy, happy, lovely little childlike photo. Are we ready for this exciting moment when I press the app and see what happens? So I press the button. Hey, look. <clears throat> right, let's see if this will work. Look, so if I make a, a knuckle with my hand, I'm wondering if this light up here is going to overpower it a bit. I've turned the light down a bit up there just to see. Look, if I put the phone, I turned it off, idiot. If I got the phone here, hang on. If I got the phone here with the light, shining on my hand look as I'm back here let's do it that way around you can see that there is a highlight look if I move it you can see that highlight but as the phone moves closer see how those highlights suddenly start to burn out do it on my face maybe look if I put it there as soon as I start to get closer look at the light on my nose maybe but as soon as I come closer immediately we start to get a burnout thing it's a much nicer light if you can just have it just that little bit further away. It does make a difference. Sometimes it's, it's just a little bit. Light falls off <coughs> in distance. If you double the distance, it doesn't halve the light. I think it's called the inverse square law. The mathematicians above you, among you will know. But uh, look it up, the inverse square law. It will tell you much more about it. Anyway, lovely picture of a child, and I hope the little lighting lesson helped. Where is that? Where have I got to? The highlights disappeared on my thing. Now I'm lost. Now I don't know what to do. Here we go. We're going here, because I think this is a great shot. Another one of our regulars, Sam, who, you know, Sam, you're always entering. Congra I really, really appreciate that. All of you guys who enter regularly, good on you. You're doing, doing the workout. <clears throat> 
You've got a great little moment here, Sam. It's a happy moment, you know? Board games, all the rest of it, the little high five going on. I think you know what I'm going to say, don't you? I'm going to say again, watch that shutter speed. If you can get that shutter speed a little bit higher, because the pitch is slightly soft, that's all it is. Um, the picture is just that little bit soft um, and that's all it is slightly faster shutter speed shutter speed you would not have had the camera shake uh, Christoph I like your picture here very much there's so much going for it I like all the the hearts and all the rest of it I quite like this person busking in the street looking really cold my little bit of constructive criticism for you would be it's kind of very bystandery because we're not engaging with the person who's playing the instrument. Now, I don't know whether or not you could have waited until there was a moment or probably gone, Oi, you, with the xylophone, over here, and got looking up. I don't know whether you could have got closer, uh, possibly with a wide lens, and sort of had more of the, of the, the little bangy things. I don't know what they're called, drumsticks. But it is a lovely picture. You've found a really great thing and, and I congratulate you for, for you know, getting in there and giving it a go. I'm just looking in the things just in case to see if you're here. No, I'm not seeing any comments. <clears throat> Let's move on a little to the next one. There is an awful lot of Christmassy stuff, which I guess is to be expected, you know, uh, with, with a theme such as the one I gave you. Graham Rogers, another one of our regulars, regular entries. I kind of like the idea, but I think we've got a similar thing going on here with the light as we had, you know, with, with, the, with the iPhone torch in my hand. I think the light source is a little bit close because it's making your Santa's face really burnt out. He's also kind of a little bit falling over backwards, you know. I think I saw a comment. Someone just said they fell off the back of their chair. I'm not sure. I'm trying to pay attention. But... Yeah, maybe that light's a little bit harsh. I think if you could have had the light a bit further away, it would have been a little bit smoother, a little bit softer. It would have wrapped around a little bit more. But good effort. What else have we got? Oh, I've repeated something twice. That's a bit silly, isn't it? Let's move on, because I thought this was very interesting. Anne Ashburn. Hello, Anne. I hope you well. I think we did a one-to-one -one day together, didn't we, a while back? I think this was really interesting and good fun. Um, garden lights on a Father Christmas and then did a bit of, I guess, intentional camera movement to, to sort of do it. And I just think it's interesting. Somehow the shapes you've got on that Father Christmas, even though we can't see any of Santa Claus Father Christmas, I just like the colours. It's a very Christmassy coloured thing, isn't it? And look at the shapes, this lovely... I keep thinking I'm using my webinar software. I'm, I'm going to draw on it, and I can't with this. Um, the lovely kind of shapes and the lines. It, it, to me, it just works. I think it's intriguing. How could we have improved it? I'm not sure. Maybe a hint of Santa through that would have worked, but without comparing, I'm not sure whether it would or not. But I wanted to just sort of bring that to people's attention because, you know, it's such a simple thing, isn't it? You can make some quite interesting images. Out of very, very little indeed. Um, Mark Lewis, you took a really nice... I like this, this little picture of the robin. And you've caught him at a great little moment. Robins are such nice little birds. There's one used to come in my motorbike shed a couple of years ago. It was so friendly. He's come flying in through the door. I'd be in there all covered in oil, my sleeves rolled up, bits of engine all over the place. Sorry if I'm boring certain people. Um, bits of engine all over the place. And so Robin, he'd come and sit on the, on the vice on my bench right next to me and just look at me and they make this funny little sort of <coughs> noise. And he'd sit there looking at me with his head on one side and go, <coughs> you do it back and look at you again. And ah, oh, it's just awesome. They're such friendly little creatures. Mark Lewis, I like your picture. <clears throat> my coaching for you would be, Robin is very, very much in the middle. And because, as all wild creatures do, they're masters of camouflage. So he's a little bit lost in those leaves. And that very bright bit in the corner is just kind of, I don't know, it, it's a bit distracting. It's fighting with the robin. It, at first glance, it looks a bit like a picture of a bright corner rather than a robin. 
I'm just wondering maybe if you could have got in a little bit closer on the robin, a little bit closer, or maybe cropped it even afterwards, because you've got some nice colours here, the green of the leaves and, and the orange of the robin. Big thought is could you have got lower? Now I know the little bugger would go and fly off, wouldn't he? Um, no, you don't, Jane. You've got kookaburras instead. Um, the little robin would fly off. But if you've got this shot, then your very next move, in my opinion, my coaching would be, could you get your camera down lower and to the right and put that bright patch behind the robin? So you've got some green on the right, robin against bright patch. How would that have worked? That would just be my next little bit of coaching to just try and do something like that and just see if you could make that work. It would highlight the robin. It's often been quite so lost in amongst those surroundings. What else have we got? This one is a very accomplished technical shot, Phil Saunders Hall. I mean, you know, it is, it's the sort of thing you'd see and it's an advert, isn't it? It's that sort of thing. You've got some very, very accomplished lighting going on there, backlighting your bottle of booze. Um, and the little, the little Christmassy, Father Christmassy person leaning on a bottle, on a glass of something, it, mince pies and all the rest of it. Very, very accomplished technically. Why did you cut him off just above the feet? That's my only question. Because, you know, yes, technically it's great. Phil, I don't know if you're here. Um, why did you cut his feet off? I just want to see his feet. Just a tiny little tilt down, a little bit of a move back. Unless, of course, I don't know, you've got a great big hole in the wall and this isn't a warm Christmasy thing at all because there's a builder underneath there trying to sort of put in some blocks. blocks. It's an elf. Elf, it's an elf. Sorry, Alec. Okay. Um, here he is. He has no feet. Oh, no. Poor little fella. That's a shame. In that, if that's the case, then what I would suggest, Phil, is possibly, rather than sort of take him off there, is take him off a little bit higher up. See if you could do something. Move the glass a little bit in some way. Take it a little bit higher up. Or see if you could put some little things on his feet. Or you're just jerking me around. <laughs> Nonetheless, it is a very accomplished, technically accomplished picture. This one, I'm sorry, it just appeals to my sense of humour. What can I say? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh dear, I'm so sorry, but it just made me giggle. An empty vodka bottle with a bit of piss in it. <laughs> but you know, who knows? Somebody may have had a very Merry Christmas on that. Um, but it's also, I think, quite an interesting picture in and of itself, Chloe, because it's a bit of street documentary stuff, isn't it? It is a little bit of a, a statement being made with this shot, so <clears throat> not altogether sort of knocking it at all. I, it did make me chuckle as soon as I saw it, but um, the colours are really nice. Your photography is technically really, really good. You know, it's a nice sharp picture. You've composed it well. All those uprights are nice and upright. It'd be so easy to get lost in the bottle and miss the fact that there's a whole street going on, which is part of the shot in the background. But you brought us very cleanly to what you want us to look at and then taken us down this street and given us hints of graffiti and colours, which then gives us this feeling of, what this street is like and, and maybe where it is and maybe what the person who left the bottle there was like. It, it, it makes me tell stories in my head. I know I'm a completely away with the fairies, but I think it's a really great picture. <clears throat> the way you have gathered so much depth down through it. Let's go into my shortlist shout outs. Everybody before, you know, I'm sorry if I sounded a bit hard on you. You know, what I'm going to say if I'm your coach, then I have to sort of say what I think may help. So, Emma Port. I was so intrigued by this picture. And now I'm not familiar with this technique at all. But I kind of get it. It's like, you know, I love your, your, you know, your stove and the roaring fire in the background and that, you know, kind of very bizarre bottle of wine in the foreground with the you know the rolling stones label i 
think it's really interesting. Now, what's it called? Let me have a look here. Ventosa style. Now, I didn't know what that was, in all honesty, because to begin with, I thought, is this a Photoshop thing? So anyway, I went and had a look. I did a little bit of research. Um, Pet Ventosa, photography, photographic artist. And I think this is really, really interesting. I haven't read up on the technique. I don't know it. Um, but I just think anybody who's interested, have a Google, Pet Ventosa. I think that was a really creative thing to have a lash at, Emma, and I just needed to give you a shout out on it. It's really interesting because, you know, you've been around a while watching, watching your photography and many others of you, of course, too, but watching those of you who get out and do the practice and enter the challenges all the time, your pictures are growing and evolving. And we keep seeing this all the time. If you're someone who is there thinking, I'd love to post a picture, but I'm not good enough. I'm sorry you never will be if you don't give it a go. It's like, I'd love to jump in the sea. It looks nice and warm, but I'm not going to because I don't think I can swim well enough. You never will be able to swim well enough unless you give it a try. That is the most important thing. But I think it's really interesting. And when I have some time, I'm certainly going to have a little look into more into Pet Ventosa, Spanish photographer, I believe. I don't know if you're here, Emma. By all means, say something if you are. Paul Trivley, you just made me laugh. Because we met, I know your sense of humour. But I did give this a shout out because I just think it's an alternative look. You know, eat, drink and be merry. What does that mean? It means so much to so many different people. And to me, what makes this is that light just on the corner of the cup. It's kind of like that little ray of hope in, in, the, in, in the gloom of a pot noodle in a microwave. Um, I just think this is fun. And that's why I had to give you a bit of a shout out here. Also, for those of you who don't know, Paul, Paul is really into his food. We were having breakfast in Iceland one day and he went and got a piece of what he thought was going to be a very sweet tasting banana bread. And in fact, it was dark rye bread. And the look on his face when he bit into it. <laughs> I don't know if you hear Paul, but uh, yeah, you are. Hello, Paul. <laughs> I just think it's a great fun picture and good on you for having that idea. Wendy. Wendy Sprinkle. Sprinkle, Spinkle. Hang on, let's have a look. It'll pop up in a minute over here. Wendy Sprinkle. I think that's a very accomplished picture. And if that's one of those, you know, crystal photo balls, I think it's a really accomplished use of one because we see these so, so often. Um, and they've become a bit old hat. To begin with, they were amazing, you know, but like any fad, it sort of moves and passes on. It's becoming harder and harder and harder to use one in any effective way. And I think you have done it wonderfully with this. And, you know, we're, we're moving into the yeah, lockdown, certainly in the UK. I don't know about other parts of the world. But, you know, this again just says, look what you can do in your home. You know, those of you who are around PLD right at the start, at the beginning, it was all in your kitchen or your garden, wasn't it? Everything. And the images and things. If you're newer to this and you're now thinking, oh, we can't go and do this because, because we've all been locked down again. Go look at some of the early pictures in the PLD group page because most of them are just taken in the kitchen or the garden. I think this is a really, really cracking picture. I love the care you've taken to get that clamp, the angle, just the same as the cocktail glass. The positioning of everything is so precise. You've got that beautiful, beautiful light coming through both the crystal and the glass against that dark background. I just think it's a really accomplished and eye-catching picture. So simple, black and red. Best friends as colours. Lovely picture. Paul Tysak. I think you've got a great little moment going on here too. It's just, it's just a happy moment full of love, isn't it? Uh, between these two women out on a cold day. Um, I just think it, it's really great. I'm just having a look because I haven't read the comment. Um, yeah, it's just a little ray of happiness, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I like people pictures, but I can't help but be drawn to it. It's one of the reasons I just like it. It's just oozing some happy and some fun, in my opinion. I thought this was kind of intriguing. 
Barry Johnson. Now, and we, we had a lot of shots of this sort of ilk, these sort of Christmassy still lives. If yours wasn't chosen, then please, please, please don't be offended. It's simply there were a lot of them and many were absolutely superb. So I tried to pick out the ones that, to my mind, were just very different in some way. And I liked this one of yours, Barry, because I like the way you use the icing sugar. Um, and the way it's just sort of snowing and sprinkling down. But I also quite like the way this is dark and moody and side lit all at once, which I think is really a very, very nicely done picture. I like the use of the wood. Um, it's pretty simple. My only bit of criticism here is I'd love to have seen the edge of that wine glass, the dark edge on the right at the bottom. If we could have just had a hint of that, and I'm being tough on you now, because I kind of like this. It's almost like you've argued with the camera and underexposed it a little bit from what the camera wanted you to do. And that is a really cool thing to do. I think it's a really nice shot. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, 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 who said that? Who said that? Sweetener. It's sweetener. Is it? Is it sweetener? I don't know. This is the trouble with YouTube and all the rest of it. I don't know if Simon Hipwell is really Barry Johnson. I have no idea. Anyway, moving swiftly on to another, I think, smashing little bit of wonderment. I love this shot, Gary. I just do. I don't know what to say. It's just like you've got some lovely light. You've got a great moment going on. Technically, absolutely bang on. You know, it's lovely and sharp, focuses in the right place, all that kind of stuff. I love the light on the head and, and I'm don't know, I'm guessing this is available light. I very much doubt. It certainly doesn't look to be staged. But um, <clears throat> I just think it's a great, great little moment. Um, does it need anything else? Oh, you can't capture moments like this and stage them. If you've been, I don't know, 12 inches to the right, so the tree was a little bit more to the right, yeah, but, you know, I think it's a really, really great little moment of merry beautifully captured. Great decisive moment. We're going into something completely, completely different, which I think is just awesome. Uh, Lil Mona Tideman, Tideman, Tidman, Tideman, Tidyman. <clears throat> if only I could hear you. I love this. I think it's just such good fun. It's just such good fun. And you know, again, it's another example of what you can achieve just by doing a little bit of thinking, a little bit of creative thought, just by playing with some ideas and then it might not work quite brilliantly. And then you just try again with something else. Why does it work? It's so, so simple. It's fun with those little scooterists coming down the side of the whisk, the angle you've got that whisk at. Um, and then, of course, we've got yellow against blue. Again, they're best, best, best friends. They want to hang out together forever. It's a very creative, artistic little shot. It's just sort of, it's just fun, isn't it? I don't know if that's the moon, which should be gray, or whether it's the sun. It's whatever it is, that's the feeling I get of just having fun. Very merry, very happy picture. Uh, I was also delighted with this one, Iglo, out there in Iceland because we didn't see many fireworks. I think you're the only person who submitted fireworks. And I do think it's a great thing. You know, it's another merry, happy sort of a thing going on. Um, there's just some nice colors. Fireworks are tricky things. It's easy to get too much of the blur. It's easy to be tempted to leave the shutter open just too long. Now, Iglo, I don't know if you're here. Is this multiple flash bursts or is it a whole bunch happening all at once? Did you leave the shutter open for a while? It looks to me as though this is one exposure. I could be very, very wrong. If you're here, I would love to know. Um, yeah, it will be cold, Sean. It's cold in England, but Iceland? Brr. <clears throat> <clears throat> no, I can't see. Doesn't it like Eglo's with us? Um, but anyway, nonetheless, it's very easy to burn out fireworks and lose their colors. If you get the exposure just a little bit too much and then it just kind of, they just burn away. 
also if this was one with the shutter left open say for I don't know, a minute capturing loads of different firework bursts which is one technique you can use I think these trails from the fireworks would be more it's almost like the shutter was opened and then a burst went off all at the same time that's my feeling I could of course be wrong um, yeah exactly good point Jenny unless they are actually frozen solid look at those people in the front um, yeah you're absolutely right I hadn't actually noticed that <clears throat> great shot Iglo I think this is lots of fun Crystal Craig I think you're fairly new in the group but I also noticed we have a common friend in Estra Suarez who I'm going to talk to you about a bit in a, in a little while <clears throat> you live in the same town don't you this was fun okay it's a composite it's a photoshopped image but isn't it fun it's just funny um, I love that you got your husband to come and do some hard work and really I just needed to give you a shout out because you know it's just another way of creating some fun some merry a little bit of happiness I just think it's great fun uh, Emma Truesdale this reminds me of being a child it almost looks like very close to where I used to live and I'm just wondering even if it isn't um, you know kids standing on the ice poking at it in wonder amazement of, of ice it's technically of course it's spot on you've got a good exposure it's a tricky one because you've got those clouds and all the rest of it they're kind of slightly in shade but nonetheless you have got them just right it's nice and sharp and I kind of like that little moment now it looks to me like the child on the left of the shot in the yellow jacket is just about her foot has just slid looks like she's just about to land on her backside I don't know um, but it's an intriguing angle that she's at it looks like Wilverley Plain very close to where I grew up and I don't know if you're here I'd love to know if it is Emma it's probably not but it doesn't half look like it <clears throat> Ilkley Moor okay got it I think it's a great shot congratulations well captured little moment um, <laughs> this just made me laugh and there was no blood involved or anything um, <laughs> sorry I've got to salute you because you always kind of put so much work into these things yes you are a whiz with the post-production with the photoshop work but you know you put all that work into photographing yourself how did you get your hair doing that you know you used to sit in front of a fan or something I just think it is just such good fun it really did make me laugh if you're here I think you are I think I saw you comment earlier um, did you do it with a fan how did you get your hair to do that I just want to know but what could be more merry what could be more of a celebration than riding a cork out of a champagne bottle wearing a Stetson <laughs> it's just such good fun I'm just watching in case you put a little note about ah yeah good one Paul that's right I'm hoping Tori will answer if maybe she has I've just missed it I'm not sure because the comments are going fast Paul's just saying were you actually sitting on your back and your hair is hanging back over the edge of something I don't know or is Tori just being secretive anyway I'm going to move on and if I see it we'll pick up on it um, there's a lot of really great shots here which I just wanted to share with you Eric this is just very minimalist and it's really nice and it's kind of possibly strange in that I know I'm often saying things like why did you just cut the tip of that off or the top of that off and this is where there's no rules because to my mind sometimes I think these things work and sometimes they don't what do you think guys just pop it in there say so, say so work doesn't work with cutting off the handles of the spoon don't forget we are all online we're all friends and Eric can't get at you if you disagree um, but you know it kind of it just works it's weird isn't it sometimes these things just instinctively work when they shouldn't um, and to me it really works I just think it is such a nice touch the way you've got those spoons positioned the light in those spoons because with something like that it's so easy to end up with a reflection 
of something in the room and and you haven't got that you've got that nice gradation of blacks and whites which is what makes up silver chrome <clears throat> i think it's um really really enjoyable nice picture congratulations on that one i think we got one here that's just a pile of fun um from andre santos <laughs> the look on that dog's face it just looks so bored <laughs> <laughs> um, I got it. Eric saying spoons show that the family will eat the dish, so it's a shared thing. That's that's really rather lovely. Um, I just think this is just funny. Look at the look in that dog's eye. To me, that dog is just saying, "Really," <laughs> but I think it's funny. I think it's cute. I think it's well executed. It's nice and sharp, well lit, perfectly exposed, all that kind of stuff. I, uh, the composition works. I love the colours in the background that are all sort of soft and slightly out of focus. Just think, um, it's just really great fun. Really great fun. This one caught my eye. This one, I'm just like, whoa, what is going on here from Nancy Katja? If you're here, Nancy, I'm just intrigued. Are we looking at a reflection? Are we looking at a composite? It intrigued me because it's kind of like going through here and then suddenly, whoa, what is this? This is one of those shots which stops you, you know? It's not necessarily beautiful, but it stops you and it engages you. It's an engaging picture and I really, really like it. I'm looking over here in case... Um, Nancy is here because I would love to know whether it's a reflection to me I get the feeling that it's some still water and I'm looking at a reflection where are all these other things coming from I don't know was it shot oh exotic lens says Jenny possibly who knows um, yeah indeed Jane it could be a photoshop thing um, where have you been Dean <laughs> sit down this minute okay what's this I use the tiny planet effect. What is that, Nancy? I have never heard of the tiny planet effect, but it's really interesting. You can't tell me what the tiny planet effect is in a YouTube chat comment during a live broadcast. It ain't gonna work. I will Google it and see if I can find out. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I just think it's a very engaging and intriguing sort of an image. Kim Goucher's uh, done such a different take, I think, on the traditional Christmas theme. I like this, Kim, because it's frosty. Whereas so many are very warm, very kind of, um, what's the word, yellow, it's by the fireside. Yours is far more Nordic in its feel. And that's one of the reasons I like it, why I think it stands out. This is like a Norwegian Christmas in the cold, an Icelandic Christmas out in the snow. Uh, I really do think uh, this is a great way to do the same thing because so many people would of course go for the far more yellowy warm tones. Great shot. Again, of course, you know, it's simple glasses, bottle, Christmas stuff. Yep, it's all, it's all kind of obvious, but I just like your different approach to it. Um, I thought this was quite interesting as well. Simon Hookway's got a takeaway baby in a basket. Um, hope it came with sauce. But it's a great shot, isn't it? That's a, you know, for someone that is an absolute bundle of merriment. And, you know, I like the way you've got the, 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 the Christmas presents and a bit of tree so deeply secondary in the background. Very nice, soft, gentle light. Um, and I did read your thing congratulations somebody asked you to photograph their new arrival into the world and uh, i think you did it really beautifully uh tastes like chicken i think you did it really really sorry sorry it tickled me back um i just think you did that really really beautifully i really do uh, you have got some great light. You've done a really great job. And I am absolutely certain that uh, your wife's friends must have been so, so delighted with that. It's a beautiful picture. Where are we going? Oh, I clicked the wrong one, haven't I? 
Numpsy, what an idiot. Okay, wow, we are up here in Runners Upland. So I think everybody did a great job, as always. If you're someone who hasn't submitted, who has been suffering from that malaise of like, no, I can't really be bothered, really try that thing. You know, like I said at the beginning, that jumping out of bed, the alarm clock goes off, just, just do it. Because the hardest part is the mental hurdle of just going to do it. And once you start doing it, then something happens, you become self-inspired, something starts to get exciting and, and it uh, kind of brings it all towards you. So, my runners up here were Brian. I just think that's a lovely picture. And I mean, originally when I looked at it, I kind of thought, that's really cool. And congratulations, because those are your children meeting their new brother. Congratulations. What a great Christmas present for you. Um, but you've also done such a lovely picture. And when I first saw it, and I just thought, oh, that's really nice. But the more I looked at it, as you know, I kind of put everything into one folder. And I just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I just found it just sort of stayed in there. So I just had to give you a shout out because it is a beautiful moment. You've caught it just right. They are totally bemused by their brand new baby brother. Congratulations, Brian, on both counts. We got another Christmassy foodie thing going on here. Uh, Brian Matthews. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's all the Bryans. Um, and I just, again, I just kind of liked it. It made me want to eat it. That's probably the key here. It's technically, obviously, well executed. It's kind of like a food magazine shot, isn't it? Now, there were many beautiful food shots going on here as well, of course. Um, but I do like it. I like the use of the holly. I like the dark colours. And again, I'm guessing that's icing, sugar, or, of course, sweetener. Uh, being sprinkled around all over the place but it's very well executed and it's very nicely lit look at the angle of the shadows anybody who's confused about light and lighting if you look at the angle of the shadows look behind sort of the bigger bit of cake look the shadows are all going off to one side also look and notice remember that thing where the light is much too close and you get those nasty burnt hot spots and then just a few inches back everything looks fine so the light is further away there's nice shadows going on this is what's meant by qualities of light there's some there's some really great lighting and this lighting sort of helps so much with the mood of this picture that i just had to say something i just think we've got a great expression here linda and Neil, i think you caught a great expression and I don't know, how do you feel when you look at this, folks? It's almost like, I get she's so delighted, she doesn't know whether to just smile or burst. <laughs> but I think it's a great shot. I like the way you've used that little bit of orangey, sorry, that little bit of red tinsel in the foreground and the softness in the background, you know, with the sparkly lights. But her face is just turning towards the light, and I'm guessing it's a window. You have got you know, just the right exposure, it's sharp, so therefore you've thought about these things and made sure your shutter speed is fast enough. It doesn't look post to me, it looks like it just happened. But um, I think it's a really lovely, lovely picture. And just by bringing the camera down a bit, just that hint of that red, just kind of sandwiching her, catching her in, in, in this layer of two bits of softness between the two, playing with depth of field. Anyone who's confused by anything I've been talking about, by the way, about depth of field and all the rest of it, Go look at my Ultimate Beginners course because it's everything you need to know about this stuff and then you can do it easily and effortlessly. And also if you're someone who thinks, oh, I'm not that good about it, I'm not going to get out of bed early and I'm not going to go and do it, well, go and get stuck in because, you know, it's 100% guaranteed and many thousands of people have done it before you and loved it. I think it's a great shot, Linda. Well done. Carry <laughs> Oh, I so kind of like this picture. It's just what a great moment, perfectly captured. What is there to say? Look at the guilt in that dog's eyes. Look at the delight in its tongue and the cleanliness of the, the face. It's just a great fun picture. You can see this 
in any magazine anywhere. It's nice and sharp, it's perfectly captured, nice light. Again, done indoors, so it just goes to prove that, you know, we can do these things. We can do these things. I think it's a really great shot. <clears throat> Going into another direction here, but I just felt this shot was so strong. Stephen James Barnett. This is another side of the whole merry, the whole feeling you've got to be merry. And I think, I congratulate you. I respect you for posting this um, as a self-portrait because it's a very strong picture. It's a very strong picture. And it, and it yeah, highlights something that is, you know, very uncomfortable for many people, um, including yourself. But I really like the way you've done it. Your use of the light, the fact that you are facing away from the light, sitting on the bed, um, and the ironic celebrations chocolates leaning against you. I think this is a very, very powerful picture. And speaking directly, you know, over the months we've seen you sort of going, oh, I don't know, and I don't think it's very good, and all the rest of it. You're very good at this. You're very good at this. What more can I say? Um, it's a very powerful picture. Thank you for sharing it. And I just had to include it because it provoked an emotion. And to me, that is what this type of image is all about, provoking an emotion of some sort. Be well, my friend. Now then, I have got Oh dear, oh dear, look what I've done. Instead of saying this week's winner, look what I've done. <sighs> Never mind. And our, my favourite picture from this one is, ignore the, what it says there, <laughs> is, I really love this one from Ken Hammond. Hammond? Hanman? Where are we? Hammond. I really, really like this. I think it is... Such good fun. Okay, I know, I talk about things like, oh, why did you cut the top of your hat off? It's not enough. I don't care if the top of the hat's cut off. I just love your thinking, and I love the way you just went and did it. And it works, and it's fun. It's about eating, drinking, and being merry. Yeah, of course, it's kind of very obvious in a way, but then you've been really clever by photographing something very obvious in a very unobvious way. I really, really do like this such a lot by putting the camera in the oven and then doing that selfie coming back the other way. I really like it, Ken. I think it's a really, really great picture. I think it's fun. I love the look on both your faces. I really do. Uh, I, I, I love it. It's your partner, whoever, holding the pie. It's just this kind of joy on her face and the way you're just kind of being... Hmm. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Your daughter and son-in-law. Okay. Nice one, Ken. I think that picture truly rocks. I think it's really great fun. And I love your thinking to put that camera inside the oven. And again, as I say, what could be a very, very obvious picture, which is very, very clearly so to the letter of the theme, because I'm always saying to everybody, think outside the box, you know, how else could you interpret it? And all this sort of thing. You've taken it so obviously and then flipped it on its head by photographing it in such a bonkers way. Love it. This is what it's all about. So <clears throat> we're drawing, oh, forward in time. <laughs> So uh, congratulations to everybody. Everybody who's just given it a go, I want to say congratulations to all of you. Um, and keep giving it a go. Keep going with this stuff, you know? Yeah, I know, I, I, I bore everyone stupid by mentioning donations all the time because let's face it, we've got to pay for it somehow and people who donate pay for it. But... At the end of the day, if you can't afford to make a donation, don't, you know, it's, it's fine. And this is where you get to learn. This is where you get to, to grow and work out. And you can do it for free. And if you can afford to bung a couple of quid towards the cost of it, well, do it when you can, you know. But do it. That, to me, is the important part. Do it. Do it. We learn in the doing. It's a bit of theory and an awful lot of doing. So anyway, I just want to say a few words about Estrus for anyone who doesn't know, and maybe some of you who've met him. <clears throat> I asked Estrus a couple of weeks ago 
um, would he be up for doing a talk just for us? And he said, yeah, of course I will, no problem at all. So I will be getting him to come and do something for us at some point in a few weeks. Now, I got some exciting news for me the other day because I was scheduled to be uh, teaching and speaking again at the International Photography Festival in Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. And I thought, they're bound to put it off, they're bound to put it off, they're bound to put it off. And then they phoned me the other day and said, come on then, book your flight. So in a couple of weeks time, I am going to be teaching out in Sharjah again for a week at the International Photography Festival, which is super exciting. And it's a privilege to meet some of the incredible photographers and people that you get to meet there. And they're such a lovely bunch. You think it's going to be serious and it so isn't. They are just amazing. So I'm touched and moved by that. So I'm not quite sure when we'll get to do this, but I would like to try and to reintroduce having a few interesting people come and chat to you guys, because I think there's there's more to be learned, more to hear. Uh, we all learn more. And uh, those of you who've met Estrus here and there know what a lovely guy he is. Uh, if you don't, then I would strongly recommend you have a little look at some of his work because I need to do something about this picture. Get rid of me. How do I operate this thing? I don't know. Estrus Suarez. I think that says enough about him, really. Uh, He's a man with a huge heart and a massive talent. Um, the things that he photographs, the, the, the compassion and with which he photographs them um, from all sorts of different places. And I truly, truly, not just because I know him and like him and we're going to be running a workshop in Ecuador at some point when we're able. It's just I think his work is so beautiful. Isn't this just such a lovely, lovely image? Um, this is kind of like real mastery of using the light and the tones and the shades within a picture. And it does, it takes a real, real keen eye. And again, it, I know it reinforces me banging on about, you know, join in, do the challenges and practice. I'll tell you a little thing. Last year at Exposure, I don't think Estra's spent a moment in that whole week without a camera in his hand. Even to the awards ceremony, we're sitting in this amazing hall and, you know, being called up, there was different awards and different speakers, really inspiring, incredible stuff. You know, all the time he's there with his camera. There was a VIP dinner at the Shakes, uh, the Shape on a special VIP dinner for, for us as speakers and trainers. And we're in this incredible place, um, you know, and throughout dinner, Estrus is picking up his camera and he's going, hey, that'd make an interesting shot from up there all the time. So if you like, his photography radar is on, is, is hypersensitive. It's like going all the time. It never seems to switch off. Now, I'm not suggesting you need to do that. But by doing some practice, by trying things, you suddenly see things. Because Estrus is not a stage things up photographer. He's not a twiddly twiddly sort of a person. I don't know whether he staged this or not. I just stole it off his website. But... Knowing him, I think it's a captured moment. I think his street photography is superb. The irony, the little moments, the observation and being able to move with such speed to be able to capture things. You know, it's noticing something. You imagine how quickly you're moving to see the girl with that hair and that mannequin and then just be in the right place and just capture a little piece a little bit of a moment now whether you're into street photography or not I, I love it I, I am but these are all things that you know make it just work capturing these little moments of, of human nature people doing things and like you'd say well, okay yeah there's a flower half over her face but somehow it works, doesn't it? Look at the lighting. Look at the qualities of that light. Beautiful, beautiful light on that girl's face. Doing that thing that so many people do. Look how she's framed with just that little tiny bit of, of the blossom going on around her. It's absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, something I just want to say here. Um, yeah, okay, I shoot rules. Estras doesn't. Estras just shoots JPEGs. Yes, he controls his camera from within the pitch control settings. He might dial things up and down a little bit. But as a photojournalist, he always says, I don't have time. I have to have my images on my editor's desk yesterday. So it's like the shot is taken and it's gone. It's about getting things really, really 
on the money as quickly as possible. And yeah, there's post-production still happening because the camera is still doing it. But he's still kind of taking a little bit of control over it. He thinks this is going to be really contrasty. I need to dial down the contrast in the camera a bit before I shoot it. Uh, I love this little moment here on the street. It's just capturing, it's, it's interactions that work. Rather than somebody just sort of running off in the other direction and going, oh, I've got a picture of a person. It's like trying to capture these little moments of interaction. He always used this very out of focus, I think it looks like a sunflower, to sort of frame that shot, to put a little bit of something around it, to make it sort of hold together and help you focus on what you are supposed to look at. I think there's fun to be had here too. Um, and use of space. Look at the use of space. We've kind of got this weird, if you want to analyse it, inverted triangle between the cyclist coming past, the guy laying there, on that deck chair having a snooze in what looks like to be some lovely warm evening light and the people coming around the corner we've sort of got an inverted triangle of people happening in this bit of street photography which i think is really cool and then on another completely different note <laughs> look at that isn't that just so great it's you know people just being people that capturing that little moment it could just be Four girls sitting on chairs, getting ready for the parade. But by being aware of what's happening, now I don't know, Estrus calls this a stakeout. When you see something and then you hold that shot and you wait to see what's going to happen and then you capture it. I don't want to say too much because I want to steal his thunder. If you can go and listen to his workshop, click the link below this in the description. Go and have a listen. He is so worth listening to. Don't just think, oh, he's going to come and talk to us one day. Yeah, probably will. Not quite sure when. But the more you do, the more you learn. I think it is a fabulous picture. And then by a totally, totally different scenario. As I say, he is also a war correspondent. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story about this shot. You see the little boy on the, on the right with his arms folded, weight on one leg, watching these soldiers going, yeah, yeah, what are they doing? I just said there were bullets flying down that street. But the kid's so used to it, he's taking no notice. He was hiding behind the soldier thinking, holy crap. But he thought, the kid's there, I need to take this shot. And if he can stand there and the bullets will miss him, they'll miss me too. And he stood up and shot the picture. It's a very different thing. As I say, I don't want to steal his thunder. But it's about putting yourself into situations if you want to do some street photography. Now, I'm not suggesting you stand up in front of a hail of bullets coming down a street. Uh, but, you know, people are much nicer than we give them credit for. And I know sometimes people sort of are like, why did you just, what are you doing? Why did you photograph me? And security guards outside buildings in London. Yeah, come on, get a life. <clears throat> but you're very unlikely, I think, to get hurt. Confronted, possibly, in a worst case scenario. And of course it does depend on cultures. Different cultures have different approaches. But another one of Estrus's war photographs i cannot remember which group he was actually with it's something pretty heavy like i don't want to say what because this is a shot it's better to let him talk about these things what he wants to what he's talking about in his street photography thing i don't know probably not this but uh it's a very powerful shot and he has told me the situation behind this and these guys would kill you as soon as look at you. You can see what kind of focal length lens he's using. That guy who's turned around and look at him as he's taken the picture, he's right by the guys. He's, he, you know, he's by his elbow. And to me, this is one of the most moving ones. This shot won Astros the uh, RFK award, which is, this is, he says this is the award he's most proud of. He's got Pulitzer awards and all sorts of stuff. He said this is his most, the, the award he's most proud of was this. And, the backstory behind this I just find totally moving when he followed two young kids who had illegally entered the USA for whatever reason they died and he followed their bodies back to their families and this is in the front room of this is one of the families with with that their child in the coffin and to me it's really moving and to hear someone who can go into these situations and he is not a stealthy man trust me uh, i think it is very very inspiring to hear people who do this sort of thing 
speak because at the end of the day I think they're doing a really important job they're showing us some things in the world that we don't get to see and we don't get to feel and we don't get to experience and hearing them speak about these experiences gives us a, a kind of a bit of a different perspective on life you know I'm grizzling at home thinking mm, lockdown I want to go out and do something it's just like well thank goodness I wasn't trying to illegally break into the United States and got killed or was standing in a street with a hail of bullets coming past me and that's normal anyway <clears throat> I would strongly strongly urge you to listen to this man speak he is really really cool um, and he's a lovely lovely guy I have probably waffled on for long enough and it's probably time we tied this up the link to estrus is below there are other links and things which you will probably find useful there uh, the next challenge is going to be going out very soon and I need to go and make sure everything's all set up so that it does. Um, there will be a gap in a couple of weeks time because I say I am going out to charge to teach so I'm afraid there's going to be another kind of three weeker coming up but don't let that stop you. Don't let, you, don't let that then allow yourselves to be complacent. Just, just keep going. If you want to grow these skills, you've got to flex that muscle. Anyway, be well, take care. I'm putting the next one up. This is a normal two-weeker. The dates will be on the video and all the rest of it on the website, etc. Be well, look after yourselves, and uh, I just love you guys lots. Thank you so much for being there and for everything you've done. Be well and take care. Until next time. <laughs>